Hi, and welcome to my race video of the World Cup in Lausanne. It started off pretty good in the swim. I was able to swim with the leaders right from the beginning. I was uh, standing right next to the best swimmers, and so it was pretty easy for me to just um, be in that train of all the good swimmers. And so I didn't uh, have to exhaust myself too much in the swim. And here at the beginning of the bike, you can see that I was in the perfect position and um, right with the best swimmers. Um, you can see Johnny Brownlee right in front of me. And that was exactly where I wanted to be after the swim. So just head down for the first few hundred meters and right into the slipstream of Johnny Brownlee. And then we had um, the first straight on the course. You can see it on the top right on the course map. And that was just 500 meters of um, flat section and then was going into the first steep hill right away. So I needed to um, save a little bit of my legs for the first hill because I wasn't too confident. I think everyone was kind of afraid of these hills. So in the flat section there was a group of about 10 athletes forming in the front and you can just see that it's a um, strung out line here with the first 10 athletes and I think behind me might be one or two other athletes but then there was a gap of maybe 10 to 15 seconds to the next little group and the first hill uh, was coming up in about 10 to 15 seconds so everybody just uh, stayed in line and there wasn't too much crazy things going on so now is where the pain starts you can see there's the turn and it goes right into a 12% incline for about 500 meters. That took us about a minute to get up. And you can see on the bottom left uh, on my wattage, it's just crazy what's going on here. You can see Johnny Brownlee accelerating and trying to create a little gap. But uh, my plan definitely was to stay in the group and not exhaust myself too much right on the first hill because it's so easy to explode on that course. I already analyzed my power file of the ride and that first hill as you can see uh, on my wattage was pretty much 500 watts in average over the one minute of incline and yeah the number says it all it's that's really tough and uh, those legs were hurting a lot but I was definitely happy to just be staying in the group because I wasn't so sure if uh, me is a more heavy athlete um, if I would be able to to actually follow those athletes up the hill So now that we're at the top of the hill, there's like a 20 to 30 seconds uh, flat section and Then it's going straight back down down the hill to the lake and you can see uh, Those two athletes just overtaking me those were coming from the small chase group of maybe three four athletes so our group uh, just grew to maybe 13, 14 athletes, but I was making sure to stay in the front of the group because the downhill was coming up right away and downhill is uh, firstly pretty risky of course, um, there's always the chance of crash happening and then on the end of the downhill there's a sharp turn and you don't want to be blocked in the back on that turn. So we're going down that uh, really narrow residential road, a uh, pretty technical descent and the most difficult thing is here uh, we're heading straight towards a speed bump and right after that speed bump you have to break to get into the corner right here and of course if you're if you're like flying a little bit um, over that speed bump then it's pretty hard to to get that exact moment um, to hit the brakes and definitely you don't want to break late because uh, then you're in the fence but there was no possibility of breaking early because there was that speed bump and you so you had to go over that speed bump and immediately afterwards get traction again and hit the brakes really hard to um, not be too fast in that, in that corner. So here again we have like a 30 seconds flat section down at the lake before it's going back up the hill and back into the pain. I was pretty motivated uh, down here because it was a perfect situation. I had that uh, rather small group in the front and there was really there were stellar guys in that group with Johnny Brownlee and Christian Blumenfeld and some other guys as well and so there was definitely the potential of um, that group um, staying ahead but uh, of course I don't didn't want to underestimate the, the guys in the back so 
I just try to help keeping the pace up. So this is the second hill of each lap and this hill was a little longer, it was like one and a half minutes and not that steep, it was like 10% in average. And so on those uh, one and a half minutes I usually would average uh, between 550 to 570 watts. So still a pretty hard effort. And to tell you the story of the race right away, uh, probably I uh, was a little bit too heavy for those hills. I mean, I'm definitely not too fat. I mean, I got like 5 to 6 or 7 percent of body fat. But yeah, I'm just more a heavy guy. I got some muscles and not small. And to get up those hills fast and, and easy as well, uh, you just have to be a little lighter than me. I definitely, probably I have the lightest bike in the field with, with uh, 6 kilograms um, on my Benotti slash AX Lightness bike. But I still guess that uh, most of the other guys had to push just a little bit less power up those hills and those maybe 30, 50 watts, they can make the difference uh, when it comes to the run. So even though the run didn't unfold as I wanted it to, I was uh, still pretty proud of myself actually um, to just push that wattage up the hill. And yeah, basically it was uh, 14 times up the hill, um, two times each lap and it was seven laps. So that makes like an interval training of 14 by one minute at roughly 500 watts. And yeah, just being able to push, push that wattage uh, is pretty good, I guess. Still, of course, I still have to and definitely can improve um, to be able to like get up those hills smoother and not to overexhaust myself all the time, like in this race. But still, one or two years, I definitely wouldn't have been able to um, push that high of a wattage so many times. So big shout outs to my coach Dan Rang for uh, making me improve myself so much on the bike during those uh, last few years. So this is the uh, second downhill section of the course. And when we were back down at the lake, we we're basically just going through transition. Um, have that little uh, flat section and then go straight back to that very steep hill in the beginning. And the problem here was that uh, the wind was coming perpendicular to the uh, long straightaway at the lake and so it's coming from the left here and due to that wind there was absolutely no slipstream uh, where I was riding and you can see Christian Brumerfeld too in front of me he was pushing really hard and uh, then you have Dimitri Polianski right behind him and I was desperately trying to catch up with those guys because they were chasing down Johnny Brownlee in the front who was uh, maybe another 20 meters ahead and I just couldn't get to them. As you can see in my wattage it was all the time above 400, between 400 and 500 watts and I was just not able to uh, close that gap. But I was trying everything because uh, I knew that th that could be a potential breakaway there in the front, uh, especially with Brownlee and Blumenfeld. And yeah, so I looked back uh, at that point and saw that um, the group was lining up behind me. So I had to leave it up to uh, one or two other guys of the group to close that gap. And that happened actually pretty quick. But yeah, for me personally, that was definitely not the way uh, I had planned it to be. Uh, pushing that high uh, wattage all the time, like for a minute uh, in the flat section, regarding that um, there was a steep hill coming up again, and all those athletes around me maybe saving a little more energy in the flat sections, and me exhausting myself. Um, I was a little bit afraid there uh, that I might just explode on that next steep hill, but luckily I still managed to um, ride up the hill with those guys. So the rest of the race for me was basically just getting up those hills 12 more times and always basically like almost going all out uh, at every hill because it was so fast and then trying to recover as good as possible uh, during the flat sections and the downhill sections but still um, staying in a good position uh, rather in the front of the pack to um, like if it gets strung out uh, the pack to not be in the back uh, and having to close down gaps and stuff. 
There was just one more uh, critical moment during the race when um, the Swiss, a Swiss athlete uh, Andreas Salvisberg he crashed uh, in one of the fences um, just coming up uh, in that sharp corner and I didn't see him crashing but when I went around the corner suddenly there was a bike on the road and um, also the fence was standing into the race course so so as you can see the Frenchman Aurélien Raphael almost uh, caught the wrong turn there and went out uh, of the fence but luckily no one else crashed into the bike or into the fence so now we're already almost at the end of the bike course and I was a little bit caught on the right side but uh, my transition place was on the left side in the transition zone so I had to orientate myself um, over to the left side of the pack to uh, not have to cross anyone in the transition zone and yeah um, I lost a few positions there because uh, obviously it's easier to get to the other side of the pack to, uh, through the back of the pack uh, rather than uh, pushing out in the front and yeah that then just uh, quickly onto the run and as I already said um, I was like super smashed after that bike leg I think I, I was never as smashed as in that, as in that race and yeah so I was um, trying to trying to start the run a little slower than usual but it didn't help me and uh, I got even slower on the second half of the run and finished with a runtime of over 34 minutes which is um, roughly two three minutes slower than I should be able to run so I hope you guys enjoyed the video thanks for watching and if you want to support more videos and always get the no notification first, just click on that subscribe button in the bottom. See you next time!